Yeah, somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, the deep things, the deep things. Now, we are in this series about the, the, deep, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. The Lord wants to reveal his deep, the, what used to be a deep secret to you. Aren't you glad about it? It was a secret, and, and it was a secret place. But the Lord says this in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. It says this, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Isaiah wrote this 600 years before Jesus came around on our earth. He, was, he came to us. It says, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. How many, how many of you know God has some great things prepared for you? So that, that, that was an Old Testament concept, but now we have something different. In verse 10 it says, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Aren't you glad to be going a little bit deeper today into the things of God? As we continue on into the, this message, I, I want to, I want to, uh, where do my whale noises go? I don't know where they went. All right, we're okay. That was Mindy's part. Uh, but I, I, I want to I get into the Word of God. Psalm chapter 107, verse 24. Uh, we want to see some things about those deep things. Here, here's a verse that, that lights my heart up. They saw the works of the Lord, His wonderful deeds in the deep. The deeds in the deep. How many of you the Lord can, can do some deeds wherever He wants to? He has wonderful deeds He wants to do for your life. Heal your body, heal your mind, heal your relationships, create things in you, give you vision and dreams for the greater things ahead. And he, he tells you that in those things, that he mostly shows you those things when you decide to go ahead and dive deep. It's uh, when you dive deep into the things of God, that's when you really truly hear God. Through your meditation, through your prayer, through, through being uh, around people who are encouraging you in the faith. And kind of dropping, dropping the time spent for the others that are drawing too much away from you. Or trying to say, or, or take your dream away or your hope away. How many of you know it's good to stay with people around that have good things to say? Yeah, it really is. So it's really cool. And, and so God can do this, and he wants to do this for you. So in these deeds in the deep, I'm after some deeds in the deep. His, his wonderful deeds, the word says, in the deep. When we're in his presence, when he has us uh, in, in, our, in solitary, when, he, when we're just me and God, or just you and God, and maybe some other faithful people with you in the deep things, praying together for what God has for you. I, I want to deal with this story a bit in Jonah. And uh, I want to just kind of hit it in a few ways. Are you guys ready for Jonah? We're going to be in Jonah chapter 1. I want to start with uh, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Say, he was the son of a mid uh, And, and uh, realize this, a mid was a, was, a, was a prophet. Jonah was a prophet of God. He, he, he came from a lineage of prophets. He was a prophet. And so he went there and he, he said, the, here was the word to him. He said, go. Go, in verse 2, to the great city of Nineveh, part of Assyria, and preach against it because the wickedness has come up before me. And preach against it. Go ahead and let them know the, the, the reality of what's on the other side of what they're doing. If they could just come to me. I want you to tell them that things aren't going like I would plan them to go. And, you know, this, this uh, the Assyria and, and uh, Nineveh specifically is a great city. A great city. It was a really, truly a great city as far as cities go. It was a good place to go. We, people probably went there to go have that special time, that dinner. Uh, like when you go to New York City or something. There was 120,000 people, the word said, in that city that meant something to God. They, they meant something to God. These people meant something to God. Enough for him to say, go, go to that great city of Nineveh. Preach against them. Pre preach to them. Because the wickedness of, has come up before me. Things aren't going there like they should be going. But Jonah... But Jonah ran away. This great prophet, prophet of God, somebody called by the name of God to do and say the things that God tells him to say. As soon as he was asked to go, he, what? Ran away. Yeah. He ran anointed for this moment. We had grown up in faith for this moment. And he ran away. Yeah. Why? Well, because he didn't like them people over in Nineveh. There was a long history between Assyria and, and Israel. And there was, there was much uh, siege uh, upon Israel from Assyria years before. And, and it, there was this thing holding on to him where he didn't, he didn't want to go to them. He didn't care anything about them. But God was about to get Jonah's attention. When God says go, we go. He's about to get, he, let me just tell you what, I'll just give you the story here. You know the story of Jonah. 
and this big fish that, you know, uh, took him in. He took him in. But it says, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. You know, so, so today, uh, we, this, when we look at Nineveh, we think of Nineveh. Consider that, uh, that it today is now Iraq. That's where it's at. And, and when, he, when he was uh, running, he, he, was going to, uh, he was going to Tarshish. And, and Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Now, he was heading there because that was, that's Spain, by the way. Today's Spain. So he was heading to Spain because he didn't want to go to, uh, to Nineveh, where the people he didn't like were. He was looking at, he was looking at Spain and, and the beauty of Spain. And I want to get over there and sit on the beach a little bit and hang out, you know, and do, do what I do over there. I'm going to do that while God wants me to go there. But how many even know God gets his way? God gets his way. Now, that's the one thing about God. You always realize that God always gets his way. God always wins. He'll do whatever it takes, you know, put us in positions that we can, we can learn that and see that. So he, 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 went down, no, he went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And I'm just going to have to kind of tell you about this story. I don't want to read the whole book of Jonah to you today. But I want to tell you some things that happened. So, so Jonah was running away. He ended up, he was on this ship and he was going to Spain. He was going to Tarshish. And when he, as he was going, there was some trouble that happened. Some trouble. The, the, there was waves and then there was, there was things. God didn't want him on that boat. I don't even know God didn't want him running away from him. So he, he wasn't out to hurt him or take his life out or anything like that. He was just trying to say, hey, Jonah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I, listen, do you see the waves? Do you see this? This is how I feel about you going away from me. The waves and the wind, they came. You know, he got, when you get out of the grace of God, sometimes when you walk out, when you walk out purposely from the grace of God and the call of God, the Lord will get your attention. He's not going to take you out. He's not going to take things from you. But he will let you know that he's here. He will let you know that I'm here. I'm calling you back, Jonah. I want you back, Jonah. I need you back, Jonah. I've asked you to do something that's very important to me. And I want you to turn around. Well, he didn't listen. He went to the bottom of the ship and fell asleep while all the waves were roaring. And they, the guys up top that had different gods than, than Jonah's, the, the true God, they, 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 were, they were praying even to, to, to their gods. They were trying anything they could do to, to get this storm to calm. And they realized that Jonah was the issue. Jonah was the issue. How many of you know sometimes we're the issue? <laughs> sometimes we're the issue and Jonah was the issue. So, so Jonah, but Jonah was sitting, and the captain of the boat came down. He's like, come on, Jonah. We drew lots, and you the issue. And you got to get something going here. You got to come up here, pray to your God, ask him to. He said, look, the only thing you can do is just throw me off this boat. They, well, they threw him off the boat, reluctantly, because they didn't want God of, of the heaven and earth and all these things to be taking them out either. But the sea's calmed. And then Jonah was there on the surface of the water, and, and, and it was raging seas, and then all of a sudden calm seas, but there he was, and it says the Lord provided. How many of you know the Lord always provides? The Lord always provides. You know, so even in the midst of his struggle, of his trouble, of his not wanting to go to Nineveh and talk to people that, and tell people about the good things of God, he didn't want to do that. That was because he held something against him. He had not forgiven Nineveh. You for not, not forgiving people, the, the, the people of Nineveh, what they did to them in the past. How many of you know that a lesson all of its own? That's a lesson all of its own. God wants us to love all people. Somebody say amen. No matter what. And, and do what God says to do and go where God says to go. So, so he was floating in the water and this big old fish comes up. <clears throat> swallows him up, as you know the story. So, so he's, in, he's in the belly of this, this whale. And, and in chapter 1, you can just, when you go home to read it, just put these headings on it if you're taking notes. Uh, chapter 1 is all about the refusal. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do it. I will not do that. I, I, I don't feel it. And I, I will not do it. I have hatred toward them. I have something I'm holding against them. But, and so I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to forgive them. In chapter 2, you get into the resurgence. Because all of a sudden, he's in the belly of the whale. And how many of you even know when the Lord has you in the depths of things, when he has you in the depths of things, and he's, he provided that whale to keep him alive. He didn't want to take him down. He wanted to keep him alive. And in the very depths of the sea, in the belly of the whale, he finally got it. Oh, man, oh, I forgot. I'm not in control. God's in control. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe I should start talking to him. 
So he starts praying, he starts praying. So all of a sudden we, we see the resurgence of faith grow up in him and, and hope grow up in him where he can get out of this thing. He starts praying to God. He's from inside the fish he prayed. In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. How many of you know, even when you're running away from God, when you turn back, as you turn back, he's answering you, he's hearing you. Aren't you glad God still hears you? Even in the midst of our troubles and our, our guilt and our pain and our disbelief, God still hears you, but he wants to hear from you. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I want you to get me out of this thing. I'll go do it. I hear you loud and clear but the belly of a whale. So he starts saying, he said, from the depths of the grave I called for help and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep. I think that's hilarious because he didn't hurl. I don't even know. People put him in the deep, right? And it was his fault. But he's blaming it on God. People do that. Somebody hear me today. Yeah. You hurled me into the deep. Well, God's going to be like, ah, well, I don't know. You, you were the one. They, they threw you in. Can I preach? All right. Into the very heart of the seas and the current swirled around me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. And I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your temple. But you got to realize this whole thing is, is his fault. He tries to blame it on God, as we many times do. You ever try to blame something on God? Stop it. All right. Surrounded, engulfing waters threat, threatened me, deep surrounded me, seaweed and wrapped around my head to the roots of the mountains. I, I sank down and the earth be, beneath barred me forever, but you brought my life up from the pit. Aren't you glad about that? Oh, Lord, my God, when I, my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. And then he says this, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. That was the very message that God wanted to take to, to Nineveh. All of a sudden he gets it. So there was a refusal in chapter 1. There was a resurgence of, the, of what he was supposed to do in chapter 2. It all came back to him. He said this, but, but I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. So he gets it. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited. My Bible says vomited. I, I, that, yeah, spit them out. To Jonah. Onto dry land. So there it was. So that, there, there's your story so far. But it wasn't the end of the story. It was truly, truly just the beginning of the story. He, he had plans for him. So, so he gets all back together. He's like, okay, I get you, God. You really want this done. And you pick me as the man, and I'm going to go. Then, chapter 3, we see the redemption of these people. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I gave you. And then what? After, about, after all that, it says, Jonah obeyed. How many of you know, have you been through, through this once or twice with God? Come on, somebody with me today. Have you, have you been through once or, one or two of these things with God? And he, he has got your attention. And next time he asks you, you're like, all right, I'm going to do that. All right, Lord, I'm going to do that. What do you want me? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to give? What do you want me to be? I'll just do it. Lord, I want you to do it for me because God will get your attention. He got his attention. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord, went to Nineveh, a very important city, big city. And he started preaching the word that God had asked him to preach. And it worked. And it worked. Because, you know, the deal with Jonah is he was a man of anointing. He was a man of anointing. He was a, a man of prophecy. He was one who, who knew things and could do things. And he was in a lineage of people. He, he was down. He was generational in this prophecy that he was doing. And he, was, he meant something. And when he, when he showed up, things changed. I think the anointing, you know, that, that anointing that was on him, uh, just like the anointing that's on you. The Lord has anointing on him who had anointing on you. So, so you can go and do and be what God wants you to be. And so he went and he did it. And, and everybody got it right away. He's told them what they were supposed to know. He, they started getting immediately. The king got involved. The king started, started changing things and, and making, making rules for people to go ahead and get done what Jonah said. It seems like a great success. It seems like everything's going right. It seems like everything's going good. People are learning. They're, 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 they're saying, Lord, I, 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 want, I, want, I want you to, to come and, and forgive me. And they're, they're in sackcloth and ashes as, as they did back then. And everybody, even the animals were getting saved. The word says. <laughs> Animals. But the God was after these people. 
God was after these people. How many of you know God is after people? Amen. He loves people. And God wasn't holding anything against Nineveh. I mean, he, things were rising up against him. But he, he hadn't, see, see, in our humanness, we write people off. In our humanness, we write people off. We get over into our fleshly side, fleshly nature. We write people off. We write entire uh, religion, you know, other religion off of, of other people. When God wants us to go to those people and tell them the truth. We, 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 we write off every, uh, different people that just didn't really seem to, to flow with us. We write them off. We write them off. But let me just say, God wants to write them in. And if God wants to write them in, I want to be in with what God's doing. I want to be in with what God's doing. So chapter 3, the redemption. Then chapter 4 just becomes, I mean, look at the chapter 4. After all this is going on, I'm going to need a few more minutes today. So just hang out with me for a minute. But Jonah was greatly displeased. Greatly displeased. What, what, he was greatly displeased. At, it, it's all, it all worked. It all, it all did. It, it's working. These people are coming to God. But he still couldn't forgive these people. After all of this and all of that, he truly, all of, belly of the whale, all of this going on, he still couldn't find forgiveness for these people. He couldn't love these people. God did. God did. Chapter 4, it says, But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, this is, uh, oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to tarnish. I knew that you were a gracious God, compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love, a God who relents from sin, sin and calamity. Yeah, he had God all, he, he knew who God was. That he said, I knew all of that. That's why I didn't want to go there because I am not ready to forgive. I'm not ready to love like that. I did what you told me to do, but I'm not going any further from here. I, I'm not going to be happy with this. I see what you want. I see how you're doing it, God, but I really don't want to be a part of it. How many of you know that's the wrong answer? To be a part of it, to be a part of what God is doing, the way God is loving his world, the, the creation, the people that he created. Who are we to not forgive and love as God forgives in love? Who are we to hold things for generations and generations or even just a minute against somebody who God loves? Every single person that you see in this world, wherever you're at, whatever restaurant you're at, walking down the road, God created that person for a great purpose. He created that person for a purpose, a reason. It's important that we understand that God wants those people to understand his love and his compassion. How are we doing with that? I mean, it gets deep in this. It gets deep. This is the deep thing. You want to talk about deep things of God? It's on the very core, the very heart of the person. I mean, down deep in your very core, God wants you to understand that he wants you to love people like he loves people. To grace people like he graces people. To be one who does and follows. And I will get to that in just a minute. But the redemption, number four, this chapter four is the revolt. The revolt of the man of God against the plan of God. He revolts, he revolts. And you, you know the story if you've read it. You know, he was angry enough to die. He was just, he just assumed die than forgive. He would just assume die than forgive. He, would, he wanted to die instead of love. He, he just couldn't get it right. The last uh, verse, uh, section of this says, should I not be concerned about that great city, he said, the Lord? I, should I not be concerned about this city? And, and, and the Lord, of course, that, that in the, the ends with a question mark, but it wasn't the end. Some things happened, I'm sure. We don't know all about them. But all I know is that Jesus brings up Jonah again when he's on the earth. He brings up Jonah and he said, he said there'll be some signs going on, just kind of like the sign of Jonah who was in the belly of the whale for three days. He said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be taking care. I'm going to, I'm going to write the wrong of that prophet. I'm going to write the wrong of what happened there. But he called Jonah a great man because he was a great man of faith. I'm assuming that he got his heart right and started loving some people. Somebody hear me today. He called him a great man. He said, yeah, that great prophet, Jonah, that great prophet, Jonah. We don't have the rest of the story here, but I promise you it got better. I promise you, I believe it got better. Because that sign, but what Jesus came to do once and for all in the belly of the earth, when he died and gave his life and rose up in all power. Somebody hear me today. Rose up in all power. He was saying, this is, I'm going to get it done right this time. 
I showed you a little bit of that. Now I'm going to show you this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 48 says this. Matthew chapter 5, 43 to 48. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Jesus, Jesus said, I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. He's still sending the rain, hoping that that takes root. Come on, somebody. If you love those who love you, what reward would that get you? Are you not even, even the tax collectors do that. If you only greet your own people, right, what are you doing more than others? Not even, pay, you know, not even pagans do that. Oh. Be perfect in love. Therefore, as Heavenly Father is perfect. Somebody hear me today. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5 says, The purposes of a man are deep waters. Or deep waters. But one who has insight draws them out. Today we're drawing out some deep waters. Some things that we have against each other. We have against somebody, maybe it's just one person. Maybe it's a group of people. Maybe it's been something in some other country or some other, uh, you know, uh, political affiliate. Do what God says. You want the promises of God? Do what God says. You consider, if you consider them enemies towards you, that's cool. But love them anyway. Care for them anyways. Pray for them. Somebody hear me today. I told y'all to be talking about the deep things today. This stuff will mess with you. It'll mess with you. It'll mess with your carnality. It'll mess with, with the, the, your humanness. But how many of you know we're called to live in godliness? So, I mean, maybe you're there. Maybe you're not. Maybe you already got all this. But if, let me just tell you, if you've been holding on to anything, any unforgiveness against somebody, release yourself into your destiny. Draw out those things. Draw out those things. This in, people of insight, draw these things out. Learn from it. Let's be better because of it. Somebody get some message out of that today. That's what I have for you. God bless you guys. Let's be that. Let's be that. Let's be that. Let's be that. Let's be that.